Um, okay, all right. Um, so, derivative review, yes? Derivative review. Okay, so there's kind of two things that we, we want to sort of get down. One is, so there's the derivative techniques, evaluating derivatives. That's one side, um, which we'll definitely practice. Um, but also, more important probably, is really understanding what it is that a derivative uh, tells you, what, you know, what, what's going on there. So let's review that first, and then we can do some of the, um, some of the techniques too. Um, Okay, so let's say, so let's start with, let's start with a function, all right? So we have a function, f of x, and let's just say that I'm, I'll, I'll just draw something right here. So this is just some function f, and um, okay, so let's say, for example, I pick a point here, maybe right there. So I'm just going to make up a number. I'm just going to say this is 2. Let's say this is 5. Um, OK, so I have a question. Um, so what does uh, f of 2 tell you? So it's not about derivatives. So what does f of 2 tell you? OK, so the value of the function, right? So the value of f when x equals 2 is 5. Now when we're graphing, so typically when we say the value, if we look at a graph, we're talking about the y value, right? That's what we think of graphically. Um, but if the function represents something, like for example, if it's the cost function, and you plug in some number, the value of the function is the cost, right? If the function is a function about area, the value of the function is the area. So whatever it is that your function is telling you, um, that's what we mean by the value of the function, right? OK, now, so what does, so another question, so what does, what does f prime of 2 tell you? Um, okay, so the instantaneous well, the instantaneous mm, well, okay, so let me put it okay. Uh, so both of the things that you guys said are like half of two different things. so. There's the instantaneous something, and then there's the slope of something. Slope, there we go, okay, all right. So the, <laughs> yeah, there we go. Okay, so the slope of the tangent line at x equals to 2, right? So if I go up here to my function, and I draw the tangent line, which looks like that, right? And if you were to make up a, a number for the slope of that, what would you say? Roughly. Just in the ballpark. Negative. Negative three. Okay. Good enough. Negative two. Anything really. But negative, right? Obviously. It's going down. Um, okay. So in this case, it's negative three, right? So that tells you. So that's one of the things it tells you. This. So if you're looking at it graphically, it gives you the slope of the tangent line at that, at that exact point, right? Okay. So what's the other thing? The instantaneous rate of change of the function at x equals to 2 uh, is 3, right? And that's a much more general, right? So like when we're talking about the slope of the tangent line, you're talking about a graph. Instantaneous rate of change, it could be a lot of different things. It could be uh, how fast you're moving in a straight line. It could be how fast your sales are. It could be how fast you're building a house. It could be how fast, I don't know, a rocket is flying, right? So it's, it can be um, a lot of different things uh, depending on what it is you're talking about. Yeah? OK, now, is what negative? Oh, yes. Yes, thank you, negative 3. Um, OK. 
Uh, let's see. And then, well, I, t I like to write down that it's also the, so these three things, the derivative of f at uh, x equals 2 is minus 3. So these three things kind of go hand in hand. It just kind of depends on what it is that you're uh, talking about. OK, so are we good with that kind of just basic derivative? What does the derivative tell you? OK, now, um, so let's take it one step further and talk about increasing and decreasing. So. Well, and then let's throw in concavity. So, all right, so let's do, let's take a look at, uh, let me see here. All right, so we're gonna compare these three. Let's see. Oh, right. Um, what is F double prime? That's the, the derivative of the derivative, also known as the second derivative, right? So it's just, you get the derivative, which is a function, right? Get the derivative of that, that's the second derivative. Yes? So far, so good? Okay. All right, now, um, so I have a question for you. So if uh, the derivative is positive, let's say, what does that tell you about the function? the original function, that it's increasing, right? OK, so why is that? Well, if we go back to our picture here, so where is the slope of the tangent line positive? It's right here, right? So if I draw a tangent line on any of these points here in orange, what's the slope going to be? It's going to be a positive slope, right? OK, all right, so then uh, let's see here. And what about um, when it's negative? That's going to be, the function's going to be decreasing, right? So far, so good? All right, now what does that tell you about the second derivative? Nothing. Nothing immediately. Very good. That is exactly right. It tells you absolutely nothing. Okay, good answer. Nothing. Nothing. I know nothing about this. OK. All right. Now, um, let's see here. OK, what if, what if, what if the second derivative is positive? Uh, it does tell you something, but take it one step at a time. So notice the second derivative is the <coughs> derivative of the first derivative, right? So if this is the connection between the derivative and the original function, right? If the derivative is positive, the original function is increasing, yes? Okay. So if the second derivative is positive, what does that tell you about the first derivative? Increasing, right? Does that make sense? Okay. So then if the second derivative is negative, what does that tell you about the... Uh, about the first derivative decreasing, right? OK, so this is a, something that confuses a lot of people, because what does it mean for the derivative to be increasing or decreasing? So now you're talking about the, so let me draw a little picture here. So let me see. OK, so I'm going to just kind of do some squiggles here. OK, so if I look at this, you would say that this function increases until here, right? And then it decreases until here, and then it increases again, right? The function. Do you guys agree with that? So that's easy to see, right? Um, but does that mean that the derivative is moving the same way, meaning increasing till the top, and then decreasing, and then increasing again? Not really, right? Because, so think about the, okay, so let's, this is the, so this is a function f, right? So this is like this one right here. Um, and 
uh, think of the slope of the tangent line. So what would it be right here, let's say? What would be, if you were just to make up a number? Po uh, a positive number, right? So just to give it a number. Two, okay. So let's, let's just say it's two right there, right? Now, if I, let's say, go right around here maybe, what would the derivative be there? Compared to where it's two, what would it be right there? Less than two would be one, right? So what would you say about the derivative from the first orange point to the second? Is it increasing or decreasing? Decreasing, even though the function is increasing, right? Does that make sense? So the function is increasing, but what's happening to the derivative? The derivative is decreasing, right? Okay, now what's the derivative right here where it's flat? Zero. Zero. Still decreasing, right? Yes? Okay. What about right around here? It's a negative number, right? So maybe minus one, let's say. Okay, now, okay, so now I have a question. So from right here, this point, what's the derivative here? Okay, is the derivative increasing or decreasing from first green to second green? Increasing, right? Because you're going from minus one, a negative number, to zero. So notice function's decreasing, but the derivative is, or sorry, function's decreasing, but the derivative is increasing, right? Okay, all right, so, so where is it where the function, so let's see. So right here we have that the derivative is, so the derivative is decreasing, right? You guys agree with that? Where does it start increasing? Yeah, you, you can't quite tell, right? But somewhere around there, let's say, it starts here somewhere. Now the derivative all of a sudden is increasing. So it's at this point somewhere. This is called the inflection point. Now it's difficult to pinpoint exactly just when you're looking at a graph. Um, but we'll be able to find it exactly later. Yeah. Just. Well, it's two different things um, with the ball and this example because the ball, um, the second derivative is gravity, which is constant, and so then that's a little bit different than this situation. But I think I know what you're what you're saying. Um, that it's no I guess I don't know what you're saying <laughs> 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 sorry uh, but or I think you're saying that it's, well, it's so in negative, it's just less right less negative yeah so it's increasing but it's still negative but it's becoming less negative and eventually getting positive, right? So here it's increasing in this section. Is it still increasing here? It is, right? So here the derivative is still increasing. Okay, so any, but so now back to the function, what do you notice, what's the difference between the original function in the two different sections, the yellow and the gray? Notice in the yellow, where the derivative is decreasing, the function is, what, what is it? Well, it's increasing than decreasing, but what other um, characteristic that it, does it have? It's, the concavity is different, right? So in the yellow, what is the function? It's concave down, right? So it's like a bowl, it's like a hat, right? It's like a hat. And then in the gray here, where the derivative is increasing, it's concave up, right? Does that make sense? <laughs> so
So, okay, so, but notice that um, here you can't say anything about the second derivative. So, like if you look at it, uh, let's see, when the function's increasing, which is this section right here, and then this section right here, can you say anything about the concavity? Not really, right? Because right here, what is it? It's concave down over here. It's concave up, right? So it's like, oh, well, I don't know. You know, you need more information. So that's why you can't really say anything about the second derivative just based off of information about the first derivative. But you can go from second to first to, your, to original. But when you're going to the derivative, you can only take one step, basically. Does that make sense? Okay, so questions about, about that? No? Is that okay? Does that make sense? Um, oh, so like, like graphing, you mean? Like if the graph of the function looks like this, what does the graph of the derivative look like? And Okay, yeah, let's do that. So that's a good question. So, okay, let's make a crazy looking function. Yes? You guys ready? With asymptotes, yes. We're going to give it lots of asymptotes. Okay, so let's do an example. Uh, given f, graph, uh, f prime. Okay, so let's see here. Uh, okay, so we're going to make a weird function. Okay, let's see here. Um, okay, you want asymptotes, right? Let's see. Um, how about, okay, so we're going to do something like this. Maybe we'll go down like that, like that. Uh, and then how about, uh, let's see, like this. And then, um, how about, we'll give it a vertical asymptote there <coughs> for fun. And then we'll give it a, Horizontal asymptote. And two there. Okay. That's a good one, right? <laughs> okay, so. So we want to graph the second derivative here. So uh, the easiest way to do it is to uh, line it up. So I'm going to do, um, so notice I, I drew it directly below. And keep the scale kind of the same. OK. All right, so this is, so this is the original function f. And then this is going to be the derivative f prime in the green. Okay, so let's do the easy parts first. Um, so the straight lines are easy, right? Because so this, so right here, so if I have um, a function that's linear, what's the derivative going to be? <coughs> it's going to be a constant, right? Uh, what's the constant? Whatever the slope is. Uh, in the whole line, right? Because the line has the same slope throughout. So what's the slope of that line? What does it look like? It doesn't have to be exact. What is it? Negative. Well, let's see. That looks like to be about 3, right? So negative 3, uh, negative 3 halves? Sound about right? Okay. 
So what would the derivative look like then? Would it be a line? Yes, would it be a straight line? Of course, straight line. Lines are always straight, right? A line, you know. <laughs> that was a trick question. Okay, so <laughs> but what kind of a line would it be? Horizontal line, yeah. Okay, uh, so it's constant uh, minus 3 halves, right? So let's see, minus 3 halves is right there, minus 1.5. Uh, so go here from there, from minus 4 to 2. Looks like that. Okay. That was easy. What about the next uh, section, that, that line? What's the slope from minus 2 to 0? Yes. Aha, excellent question. Can I fill it in, yes or no? You definitely cannot. Because notice that, so, okay, take a step back here. So uh, it has to be open because the derivative, if you leave it, if you uh, close it in, you're saying that the derivative at minus 4 equals to uh, minus 1.5, right? So you're basically saying that the derivative exists, right? But does the derivative exist at that point? does not exist. What do you need to have for the derivative to exist? Yeah, it has to be at least continuous, right? So if, a fun if, if the derivative exists, then for sure it's continuous. So if it's not even continuous, well, it doesn't even stand a chance of being differentiable. You won't be able to find the limit, because remember, the derivative is a limit, right? So you have to be able to take the limit from both sides. If there is no Si one side of the function, well, then it's not even possible. It's like a no, it's a non starter, right? So um, there's no question that it's um, an open hole at minus four because the limit doesn't exist coming in from the left. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, and for the same reason, you don't even bother thinking about the derivative at minus two. It's not continuous, so the derivative doesn't exist. Uh, what about at zero? Does the derivative exist at zero? No. Again, it's not continuous, so the derivative doesn't exist. What about at two? It's not continuous, so then the derivative doesn't exist. Not at the point, right? So it could exist immediately before, immediately after, but not right at that point. Does that make sense? Um, OK. So back to the other question. So what's the derivative from x equals minus 2 to 0? It's 0, right? So it's a constant 0. The slope of the tangent line from minus 2 to 0, the derivative there is just equal to the number 0. Does that make sense? So far so good for those two sections? OK, so those are the easy ones, right? Yes. Yes, okay. that's correct, yeah. Um, okay, now another thing that, that probably would be helpful is, uh, let's see, if I ask you what's the derivative at x equals to 1? Zero. 0, right? So right here the derivative equals to 0. So that means that my derivative has to pass through 0 right here at, at 1. Does that make sense? You guys agree with that? So at x equals to 1, my derivative is going to pass through there, yes? Okay, now, uh, let's see. So if I take a look at this section from x equals 0 to x equals 1, what's going on with my function? <coughs> so here, f is increasing and might as well throw in the concavity information because we just spent time talking about it. So it's increasing and it's what? Concave? down, right? So it, it's better if you have both pieces of information because that means that you'll be able to get two pieces of information about the derivative, right? Because take a look at this. If it's increasing and concave down, right? 
What does that tell you about the derivative? It tells you that it's positive and decreasing, right? So that's more information than you otherwise would have if all you were doing was looking at one piece of information. Does that make sense? So I know that the derivative is going to be uh, positive and decreasing. Yes? You guys with me or without me? Okay, so positive and decreasing. Now from, from where to where? Well, what's the derivative right here at zero? What's the value of the derivative? Nope, it's not one. That's the value of the function, right? So make sure you keep them straight. So what's the value of the derivative at x equals zero? Well, okay, okay. It doesn't exist, you're right. <laughs> but, uh, okay, so I'm gonna have an open hole. Where should the open hole be? Nope. Not one, not zero, not, eh, probably not two, closer to, Three or four, right? How would you find out? Well, you know, it's it's a guesstimate because w so it's it's this, right? It's the value of whatever the slope of that line is, right? The derivative is the slope of the tangent line at that point, right? So if you take at zero, you draw a tangent line, right? I mean, it's a guesstimate, but what does it look like? It is. It's about. Three, no? Because from one, you go up from one to four, so three, eh, two and a half, yeah. So I mean, yeah, we're splitting hairs here, but okay. So the derivative should be, let's just say it's three, so then the derivative should be right here, right? That's where I start my, because I know it's going to be, what did I say? Positive decreasing, but I have to start somewhere, right? So I need to know roughly where to start. I can't just plop it down wherever I feel like it. Um, so this value, which is 3, is the slope of the tangent line there, which we guesstimated to be about 3, right? After drawing the line. Does that make sense? Um, okay, so then it's going to be, so here to 1, it's going to be look like that, right? Positive and decreasing. Maybe I should keep it green. Positive decreasing. Okay. Uh, let's see. Now, what about? No, let's see. Uh, okay. So, what about here in this section? So here I've got an asymptote. So what's the deal here? So what is f? F is decreasing and concave down. Okay, so what does that tell me about the uh, derivative then? Negative. Negative and decreasing, right? Okay, but um, so what's what about the asymptote though? I mean, what? How does that? How's that going to look? What do you guys think? Is it still going to have an asymptote? It is, right? Why? Well, what is the slope of the tangent line, say, right here, roughly? Right here, let's say. Minus 1, maybe-ish. OK, but what happens as you get closer and closer to 2? What happens to the slope of the tangent line? Yeah, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. It's negative, right, because it's going down but it gets bigger and bigger in absolute value. So that means that the derivative, so it's negative and decreasing, and it's just going to keep getting smaller and smaller and smaller as you get closer and closer to, to 2. Does that make sense? Yeah? OK. All right, now, so what about on the other side?
So here it's, so here F is decreasing and concave up. So what does that tell me about the derivative? Nope. Negative, right? Yeah, so be careful. It's negative and increasing, exactly. So but so notice where is where is it gonna be? The asymptote. Uh the vertical asymptote. Notice it's not this it doesn't look the same, right? Do you guys see that? Is it right to say that it's going to go like that? No. Because what did we just say? We said it's it's negative, right? It's going to come up. Because notice what's the slope of the tangent line here? Those are all negative tangents, right? When you're looking at the function, the tangent lines are negative. So, um, so that's interesting, right? How the function has a, the asymptote, it goes you know, down on one side, up on the other, but the derivative goes down on both. Um, and okay, so now the other thing though is, so we know it's negative and increasing, um, but it depends, right? So negative and increasing, well, what does that mean? Uh, well, what's the slope of the tangent line? What's it approaching? It's approaching zero, right? So it's getting flatter and flatter and flatter. So then that means that you're going to have another horizontal asymptote, but this time at zero, right? So not at two where the original asymptote is. This time is it's at zero because what do, so this is really important because what are, what are the values of the derivative represent in terms of the original function? The values of the derivative are the slope of the tangent line of the original, right? So here, when you're reading the y values right here, so you read these y values. Um, when you read them, if you're thinking of the original function, you're really thinking those y values tell you how fast the original function is changing, right? Or what the slope of the tangent line is um, at whatever uh, specific value. Does that make sense? Yeah. At three, at three. Oh, because it's, it's not continuous at zero. So the derivative can't exist. That's not possible. Because I know that you proved that if a function is differentiable, then it's continuous. So that means if it's not continuous, then it can't be differentiable. Well, okay. Let's write down the definition then. Definition. You're going to get mad at me when I give you the definition though. Uh, F, <laughs> differentiable. <laughs> at x equals to, do you guys prefer A or C? C, okay. All right, f is differentiable at x equals c if, with two f's, what does that mean? If and only if, okay. f prime of c exists. That's it. That's the definition. That's all it is. So if the derivative exists, then it's differentiable. Um, but you have to keep in mind, well, what's the definition? How do you actually evaluate the derivative? Remember, it's a limit, right? So the derivative, so let's write that down. F prime of C is equal to, there's two definitions, right? So there's the limit as, well, I don't know. Let's do this one, I guess. X approaches C of F of X minus F of C over x minus c, right? 
That's one of the definitions. And then the other one's the x plus h one, right? Um, so they're equivalent. Typically, when you're looking at the derivative at a point, uh, this one is a little bit easier to work with because um, you're not adding in parentheses, which causes some issues with um, when you're trying to simplify. Um, if you're trying to find the derivative uh, function, so typically then in this case you would use this one, the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x over h. But really it's the same thing. I mean, um, and then if you plug in c there, you end up with exactly the same the same thing on, on both. But, um, but what do we know about limits? So from our study of limits from before, for a limit to exist, what has to be true? The limit has to be equal from left and right, right? So it's from both sides you approach it, it has to be the same. So right away, right off the bat, any of these discontinuities, they give you uh, problems. You know, so you have this one as well. Uh, because you approach it from both sides and it's not the same. Yes. So in like the original portion, you got on x prime, mm -hmm. started at the slope to the point. Yes. On the original. Yes, exactly. So the hole is there. At that point, exactly. So right. So on the f prime graph, the hole is there. And that's the yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, as soon as you go off, you know, as soon as you're at 0 0.000001, then you're somewhere. Just not right at 0. Yeah. It's for the same reason. Because if you, so here, let me, let me give you with... Um, uh, I'll give you an even simpler example. You don't even need to use the uh, definition. So let's say, for example, you have a function here, and it's a piecewise function. Let's say it's um, minus x squared plus 2 when x is greater than 0. And let's say it's, oh, I don't know, uh, 3, 3x. When x is less than 0, let's say. So what's the derivative of this? Or let, let's say, I don't know, let's say it's greater than or equal to 0. So you can use the limit definition, but you don't really have to. But the derivative is going to be another piecewise function, right? I mean, it has to be. If your original function is piecewise, well, then the derivative has to be piecewise too, right? OK. So to get the derivative here, so what's the derivative of minus x squared plus 2? That's just the power rule, right? So negative 2x and then what's the derivative of uh, 3x? 3. Okay, now is this correct what I just wrote down? No, there's a problem. It's almost correct. But the problem, so this is one of the cases where we got into a little bit of trouble because we went straight to the rule that we know how to find derivatives easily, right? And we jumped the actual definition, which is this, right? So I know that if I'm going to evaluate a limit of a piecewise function, if the original function is continu the original functions are continuous, like here, minus x squared plus 2, is that continuous? Yeah, so like, but if you think of it in isolation, is it continuous? It is, right? It's just a parabola. Uh, what about 3x? That's continuous too, right? So where is it that you look for discontinuities when you have a piecewise function? Where you break it up, right? Wherever it changes from one function to another, you specifically go there and you say, okay, well, let me calculate the limit here exactly and make sure that um, the limits are the same coming from both sides, right? Does that make sense? Okay, so when we did this right here, we completely ignored that whole idea, right? We said, oh, I know the power rule, so I'm just going to find the derivative, right? It's like, oh, I know how to do this. 
but remember that the derivative is a limit and this is not a problem here, right? So what that is completely correct, right? When x is greater than zero, the derivative is minus two x. That's no big deal. When the um, when x is less than zero, the derivative is three. That's no big deal. But where is it that you have to look closer? It's at x equals zero, right? And if the function is not continuous there, then you don't even stand a chance of the derivative existing. So you have to look at it a little bit closer. So if I then look at the look for the derivative, whoa, that's not good. Uh, if I look, what's the derivative of this function at zero? What would you say? Is it zero just because just because this function is uh, defined at zero? No, right? So you have to take the limit. So you take the limit from one side, and then you take the limit from the other side. What would you get if it, like if I actually went through this and I got the limit uh, at zero here, and I did all that work and all that stuff? Would you get a number out of it? Yes. But what's the problem? It would be a different number from both sides, right? So that's why the derivative at zero does not exist. Because you come in from one side, you get one number. Coming from the other, you get a different number. Well, the limit doesn't exist there. Does that make sense? Um, so, yeah, so then, so that's, that, that's, yeah, that's the deal there. So then you can see it right here, right? If I come in from this side, from the right, what's the derivative? The derivative is three, let's say, right? If you come in from the left, what is it? Zero, right? So it's not the same, so the derivative doesn't exist. Can you show us by if those would have, uh, where there's a sharp thing? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, that's why the... Right, sharp bends also, it's not continuous at sharp bends because for the same reason. So even though it's continuous, then um, there's still the, that big change, right? So then it would, you know, jump, you know, like if I have a function that looks like this, let's say. So what's the derivative here? Looks like, let's say minus two, right? Let's say it's constant like that, minus two. And then all of a sudden over here, What's the derivative there? Well, this looks like one. So the function doesn't jump there, but the derivative jumps, right? So that's why the, the derivative doesn't exist right here at this point, where there's a sharp bend. Um, oh, so what are some other ones? So, well, might as well just talk, talk about them. So um, graphs with, um, graphs with, no, not with, um, where, um, derivative does not exist. Okay, so there's the obvious ones, right, where you have a discontinuity, right? So that we already talked about. Uh, there's another one if you have asymptotes, right? Vertical asymptotes. But that's also a discontinuity. Um, but so what are some other ones, though? The sharp bends, right? So sharp corners. Rational functions, but they have vertical asymptotes, right? So then that would fall under the, the same discontinuity one. Um, there's also uh, cusps, what are called cusps, which are kind of like sharp corners, but they look, they just look a little bit different. They're like, um, kind of like that sort of thing. Looks like a butt. <laughs> like a baby butt. Um, can you guys think of another one? 
strange function. Removable discontinuity, sure. There's also, remember the uh, crazy oscillating? Oscillating discontinuity craziness. Where we have that one function. You guys remember that one? Where you get closer and it oscillates more and more. Um, what's another one? No, it's not. It's a removable discontinuity, but I just... What is it? Yeah, but that's a vertical asymptote. So it's the same kind of thing. But what's another type of function, maybe? Uh, close. Um, so here, let me give you an example here. What's the derivative of the cube root function? So you rewrite it, right? One third x to the negative two thirds. Okay. So if I rewrite this, this is one over three x to the two thirds, right? Um, where is that not defined? At zero, right? It's not defined at zero. But is the original function defined at zero? So this, this is an in, it's interesting example because what's the domain of this function, the original? All real numbers, right? So the, it's the cube root. So you can get the, the cube root of positive numbers or negative numbers, right? Um, but notice the derivative is... Um, So it's a cube root again, right? So the domain is uh, all real numbers again, except for zero, right? So what does it look like? What's wrong with, with, not with the function, but what's wrong with the derivative at zero? What's the issue? Um, it is undefined, but what does it look? What does the original function look like that makes the derivative undefined? Because it's pretty smooth, right? Yeah, it's called a vertical tangent line. So what it is, if you graph it, so remember it, it's hard to pick up uh, when you're, you know, you're just kind of looking at it. You're like, oh yeah, it looks fine. But right at zero, it's it, it's right at that at that point at zero. It's dead vertical. So what's the slope of a dead vertical line? It's undefined, right? So, so this has a vertical, vertical tangent. Okay. Does that make sense? Craziness, huh? Um, at zero, the original function you mean? Well, we would have to graph it. What would it look like? Can we graph it just for fun using our uh, technique that we just developed? Uh, I don't know, a couple examples ago. Probably, right? <laughs> So what would it look like uh, from zero on? So the function here is, what is it doing? Increasing concave. Okay, so then the derivative should be So if the function's increasing concave down, the derivative should be positive. Okay, so if the original function is increasing concave down, the derivative is positive and decreasing, right? Okay, good. Right. Is there a quicker way to... 
<laughs> get back to where it was. Okay, there we go. Um, so positive decreasing. Um, and but notice what is it really close to zero? Right, but really close to zero. So it doesn't exist at zero, but if you just nudge yourself over, just point zero 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 one over. Big, small, tiny, very big, right? Because it's so if you look at it, it's if it's dead vertical, so the the slope of a vertical line is undefined, right? But if you just nudge it like ever so slightly this way, now it's a really, really big number, right? So, what does it look like then? <laughs> As a vertical asymptote, right? So it's positive decreasing, uh, <laughs> and uh, what about on the other side? So it's, uh, let's see. So here notice the function is, what is it doing now? It's increasing concave up, right? So then the derivative would be positive increasing, right? Okay, so then what does it look like? As we get closer to zero, it's going to have an asymptote, right? Um, does is it going to have a horizontal asymptote at um, zero? So, so like if you look at, okay, so think of this, what's the slope right here? It's like some positive number, right? Positive, positive, positive. As x gets bigger and bigger and bigger, what's happening to the slope? Nope. Increasing, but slowly. Yeah, exactly. So, the slope is increasing but it's increasing slowly does that make sense is it ever going to completely level off no right so like if you graph you know if i uh well do i want to what can i do desmos bring out our trusty old pal our good old pal Desmos here. Um, if I graph uh, x to the one third, so it looks like that, right? Oh, boo. Um, okay. Um, if I zoom out, Well, if you look at it like this, it looks like it's leveling off, right? Let's see here. Let's see. Huh. Uh, let's see. Let's so, oh, uh, what was I thinking? Oh, yeah, no, I wasn't thinking. <laughs> I was gonna, I was thinking of something else. Well. 
Um, no, no, it's not. Um, no, it's definitely going to zero. Um, what was I thinking of? I must have been thinking something else in my head. Um, so, yeah, you can see it's obvious that it's going to go to zero, right? Right here, if you look at it. Take a look at the derivative function. As x goes to infinity, what? Yeah, the bottom just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger, right? Uh, which one? The the y value is increasing. Yes. Yeah. So you have to. Okay. So good question. All right. So. Let's say that you had function f and you had a question mark here on what's going on. And let's say that you knew the derivative. You're over here in a million. Is that a million? Yes. OK. Let's say that you knew that the derivative is really small over here. Right there, really small. <laughs> You can barely see it. Um, is the function increasing or decreasing? Right there at a million. Based off of that little dot right there. Nope. Still increasing. Why? Here, this, that little dot tells you f is increasing. Because what's the connection? So you have to make sure not to get confused. It's, it's easy to get confused. That's why you have to make sure that you're, you, you have it straight in your brain. So what's the connection between increasing, decreasing the, the function and the derivative? If the function's increasing, the derivative is positive. If the derivative is positive, the function is increasing, right? So What's that green dot right there? Is it positive or negative? It's a positive number, right? So that tells you that the function is going to be increasing. Now, is it increasing fast or slow? Really slow, right? Because it's so small. But it is still increasing. Uh, so, the, yeah. Does that make sense? So it, it is a bit, uh, it, 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 your brain hurts when you're thinking about it. But see, it's all right here in this magic table right here. Got to keep it straight in your brain. <laughs>